What's See, this, is, this region is a very important region. Like your Prime Minister outlined, this is at the crossroad of the world in many ways. The East and the West, the North and the South. And this particular geography is going to be the most critical in the 21st century for connecting the vibrant and emerging economies of the South, of the, from the Southern Hemisphere, from the tropics, from Asia, from India, to the markets and the populations in the North, uh, in Europe, and, and of course even in the Atlantic. So, uh, this geography must express itself. They must tell the world what they want, how they see the world evolve, what must be the rules for the road in the 21st century. And this conference is an arena, it's a, it's a venue where experts from this part of the world are meeting with their counterparts from other regions and discussing that future that is going to implicate both of us. So this dialogue is in many ways an Armenian platform located in Yerevan but created for the world to come to a new arrangement in the 21st century that will lead to more growth, peace, stability and better understanding of different cultures and contexts. Armenia has always been a, in many ways the the, the boundary civilization. It has connected the world forever and it must do so even now in the 21st century. So in that sense, uh, how do you see the communications and transportation in this region? This region has, you know, so many opportunities right now. You see that uh, as, um, for example, I can give you an example of India alone. As, as India grows from $4 trillion to $10 trillion, it needs to find new ways of connecting its um, manufacturing and its services and its businesses to different parts of the world. So India is already thinking about so many different connectivity routes, for example, through Iran, for example, the North-South Corridor, for example, uh, you know, investing in the greater proliferation of, of its trade through the Suez Canal. So we are looking for opportunities to connect. And your Prime Minister actually, in this morning speech, gave a blueprint on how this connectivity can, can happen. Literally, Armenia is located as the hub that can be the location through which multi-modal transportations through different routes can occur. And I think it is a very, very positive agenda. For Baku, it's very boring that Armenia is uh, cooperating with India when it comes to military. Uh, what do you think, uh, Baku? Uh, what do you think Baku's vision <laughs> in this case? Look, I don't know Baku's vision. <laughs> And I also don't know about Baku's anxiety and worries, but I'm sure they are also thinking about their own future, like all of us must. But uh, I think there is a certain uh, geographical rea reality, there is a civilizational reality, there is a cultural reality. And we must not allow the negative agendas of others implicate a positive, positive agenda of uh, actors who are wanting to benefit people. And I think that is what must define the future. So positivity must shape the future, not negativity. So I, I'm sure that uh, Baku will benefit from these arrangements. Baku is not going to be uh, affected. They are going to actually perhaps benefit even more than many others. So Baku must look at it positively and I'm sure they are. They are hosting the COP29 this year and hopefully that will give them a sense of um, being more um, uh, positive in the multilateral uh, agenda. And I'm, I'm quite confident that every actor in the region will see merit in um, the connectivity projects that are coming out of this region. Could you please sum up the main points for military cooperation between Armenia and India? Look, I am not a military expert, so I will refrain from answering the question. But uh, all I can say is that there is an inherent trust and a inherent belief in both Armenia and India that they need to partner together. Uh, that is not my area of, of study, so I am not going to be able to comment on what is really happening. But let, let's be quite clear that what we have done together in the last decade is going to only be strengthened in the next decade. So we are uh, definitely in a, in a relationship where we have deep trust and deep strategic interests that, that coincide. Thank you so much. What about Thank a new you. Uh, but old transport corridor between uh, Armenia, India and Iran? This uh, for Chabahar. Uh, how important for... Very, very important. In fact, uh, the Chabahar port and the and the uh, arrangement uh, that can now uh, the warehouse and the road transportation and and on land transportation that can now connect uh, both uh, uh, armenia as well as georgia to yes. chabahar yes. Is, is 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 vital is very critical and i'm sure it is going to be one of the most important um, developments uh, in the times to come so i'm quite confident about that corridor mm -hmm. what you can mm. uh, what is your uh about India's, uh, India relation and can they become 
alien in the future? Can they become? As the aliens. Look, I think these are labels from the 20th century. In the 21st century, uh, partnerships is the way to go. Alliances is a very 20th century rigid conception in a world that does not exist anymore. We have to be more agile, more flexible, more nimble. We have to be able to adjust based on what is happening around us. Uh, let us just say that the partnership that we have is robust, strategic and uh, based on deep trust. And that is itself a 21st century uh, modern day uh, uh, man, uh, you know, management tool to, to respond to the world around us. Mm -hmm. A couple of words about uh, strategic interest India in our region. No, I, I said it in my remarks that uh, you are the leading, uh, for me, in this region, you are the leaders in, in, um, uh, in technology. Uh, you, are the, uh, uh, you are doing really well when it comes to smart agriculture and climate smart techniques for, for uh, food processing. Mm -hmm. And I think these are uh, two very important areas where Armenia has a lot to offer to the world and to India. And I think an India-Armenia partnership in industry and in technology and agriculture is an obvious win-win for both of us. Uh, India is um, uh, obviously at a stage where it will seek um, answers to its own challenges from all parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Armenia has some vital answers for India, has some vital inputs that it will contribute to India. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, past a few years, there is a lot of Indians that are arriving to Armenia to study. To Not enough. We need more. You need more Indians to yes. come? Yes. I mean, look, there are more Indians going to Baku than to uh, Yerevan. We mm -hmm. have to change that. Uh, do you following up how they are doing in Armenia, what they are doing? No, I, I, I don't have a uh, 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 response to that. But uh, clearly, uh, Armenia is a place where people feel safe, mm -hmm. feel at home. And I think uh, as the connectivity between our countries improves, we have more direct flights, you will see a, a, a greater flow of, of traffic both ways. Mm -hmm. Armenians in, Indi in India and Indians in Armenia. How many Armenians are living in India? Not enough. I mean, we have, of course, traditional links, and so we have uh, presence in Calcutta, in Madras, mm -hmm. and, some, and Chennai, and some other cities. But uh, literally not enough. Of course, in recent times, because of business, mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of business traffic. But uh, we need to have more students there. Mm -hmm. We need to have uh, people living and investing in India. Mm -hmm. And I think that is uh, negligible. That is what we really needs to improve. We have, a lot of, we have thousands of people coming for business, coming for politics, coming for defense sector work. But th those are transitory populations. We need permanent Armenians in India. We need uh, the flavor of Ar Armenia back in our lives. Thank you.